Welcome to another Katan Strategy episode with me is Juan. In this game I'm placing in second position as Orange and Red has gone for the strong all wheat sheep spot right at the top there, the 5, 10, 9, which is uh, really strong. So what I'm thinking at the moment is that there's no connected all wheat spots. So I'm going to have to choose whether I want to go for ore first or wheat first. There's only one really good wheat spot hex on the board and that is the six so i think i need to take the six and i'm really liking the look of that sheep port over there with the high amount of sheep that the 6109 produces so that's where i'm going to go i'm hoping that i'll be able to get an ore spot on the second pick so now it's blue's turn and they're going to face the same dilemma that i did i think that they should also go on the wheat that six wheat spot probably the six five eleven wheat sheep wood and then most likely get an ore spot on their second pick. Red goes for the 8-4 brick wheat and points towards the 10 wheat and the brick port. So that's actually not a bad spot. When they build on that brick port, they're going to be able to have a free card anytime in 8 rolls. And there's a nice 6-4-3 wood or ore spot down the bottom. So that's going to be, it's going to be an interesting setup for green. They are probably going to be going for longest road. They're going to have pretty high ore production, high wheat, high brick, and high wood. So it's actually not a bad setup from green there. Blue's turn now, and surely they have to go on the 9, 4, 2, or, or brick spot. That's going to be really good for them in terms of uh, taking largest army and having a bit of a dev card race with red. So that's probably going to mean that I'm going to be locked out of ore. There is one ore spot left, and that's the 9-11. But I just don't see myself competing with red and blue in this game for largest army. So what I kind of decide to do here is a little bit different um, to what I usually do. And I'm going to choose to go on the 8-5-10 wood sheep sheep spot. Now the reason I do this is because I've noticed that I can't, I don't think that I can win the race for Largest Army against Blue and Red. And if I can't win Largest Army, I don't want to go for it. So that means I've got to go for Longest Road. Even though Green has strong road building, I don't really like their expansion spots. They don't really have much room to expand on the left and then on the right of the board, They've got a bit of room, but it's all low production hexes. So I think that the best way for me to win this game here is to go for the a kind of a port strategy. So I have a lot of sheep, a lot of wood, and I'm right near the sheep port and the wood port and high wheat. And I've got that whole bottom of the board to myself to essentially build roads and take longest road. So... That's the kind of strategy I'm going to go for this game. Hopefully it works. I predict that red will go on the 6, 3, 12 wheat, wheat, brick. Because that will just give them even more wheat. They could go for the 10, 8 and block green from getting to that brick port. And that's what they do. So that's actually not a terrible decision. Alright, let's get this game rolling. So the first thing I'm going to be looking to do in this game is definitely be moving towards that sheep port i've got a lot of sheep production in this game and yeah i really need to get over there to start actually doing something with the sheep as you can see i've already got four five now sheep in my hand comes back around to me there is such little brick on this board that i doubt anyone's going to trade for it but i offer it anyway sometimes people do dumb trades there's a two a 12 and an eight so yeah brick's going to be very hard to come by on this board Blue has nine cards, so they should be able to do something on this turn. Be interesting to see if they go up for that five sheep. So they offer wood for wheat and then trade with green. Interesting. I don't like trading with people who have, you know, kind of eight or nine cards because they tend to be able to do a big move. They four for one or for brick. That's heavy. And then bang, cut off green to that three for one port. Bet Green's regretting that trade now. Yeah, you shouldn't never trade with someone with that many cards, especially if they're within striking distance like that. 
and Green builds a city. So, you know, you can kind of see why they did that trade now. They can build a city. That's pretty strong. I would have put the city on the ore, though. Um, not really sure why they've gone for that there. Maybe they think that brick's going to be good trading material, which is a fair, fair assessment, but I still would have put it on the ore. Roll another sheep. Yeah, it's going to be really important for me to get to this sheep port. I really can't do much at all without it. Red buys a development card, so I was kind of correct in the fact that they're probably going for largest army here. Four rolls giving ore. Again, trying to trade for brick. And then red accepts that trade. I'm kind of surprised, but then yeah, red does need wood, so that does make sense. And then green builds another city. We are not very far into this game, and green has two cities and a lot of road building. So this is going to be very interesting to see whether green can expand quickly. They expand out to that three for one port. Red still unable to make a move. Kind of stuck there at the top of the board. That's kind of one of the downsides of taking that position. I'm trying to trade for brick here, but I doubt anyone's going to give it to me. Yeah, it's going to be tough. 12 rolls, that helps no one. And another trade between green and blue, allowing blue to buy a development card. So yeah, the race is on between blue and red, I think, in this game for development cards for sure. And nine rolls giving blue and red ore. There's been a lot of ore going in this game, so that's not very good for me. That's meaning all these other players can buy development cards and cities while I'm kind of stuck here. I accept this trade to get myself some ore, and then bang. They use their road building card to build two roads. That's a really good card for red. Um, so I've got the robber here, and I'm going to place it on that nine ore. I think that, yeah, red and blue are just really dangerous in this game. I don't want them to get too far ahead too quickly. So I'm going to slow them down and take a dev card. So I get a knight. This is going to be helpful in case anyone wants to block me. I doubt anyone's going to be blocking me because I've only got two points, but I'm sure it's going to come in handy. Blue decides to block red and green on the eight brick. This is a pretty strong block here. Stop them both from expanding and then rolls a seven. So it has to move it over onto red. This is pretty smart because red's going to be competing with blue for largest army. So in this case, blue is blocking red because that's their direct wing condition competitor. So I like this from blue here. And then green rolls a seven pretty much straight away and puts it on our six wheat. So yeah, that... That robber's gonna, sorry, that knight's gonna come in real handy. Green buys a development card, so probably gonna be difficult for Green to stick in the game, the largest army game, but um, yeah, who knows. So I'm gonna put the robber over here on green just because I think they might have a brick but um they I don't get one yeah blocking green is going to be important for me in this game because they're going to also be going for longest road so it's going to be a matter of for me of choosing between probably that six wood the eight brick or the nine or depending on who's ahead for my robbers so yeah depending how the game unfolds then another seven rolls from blue and blue blocks the eight brick. There's been a lot of sevens so far in this game. So I trade a sheep for an ore here. So hopefully I can buy another development card. I'm really just hoping that it's going to be a card that's going to help me build that settlement. Or maybe 
get a robber and rob some brick off somebody. I really need something to start happening in this game. I've had a really slow start to the game. Green builds inland and takes longest road and gets towards that 9 ore, so they're just going to be a complete ore factory when all that all that ore starts raining in for them. So I finally am able to trade a wood for a brick and then get onto that sheep port. I decide not to do a two for one with the three sheep here and go for another development card because now that green started going for road I'm going to have to start competing with them for road and I've got my sheep port now so that should give me the flexibility that I need without needing to rely on development cards. Get a 10 which gives me two wheat, two sheep sorry. Red builds a city, which is dangerous, so they've built it on their all wheat sheep, so that's going to increase their development card capabilities by a lot. But then green accepts a trade with me, wood for brick. Probably shouldn't be trading too much with green, but my theory is that they produce wood and brick, and a lot of it, so me trading them a wood doesn't really help them too much. It's pretty stupid on their part. Because I don't produce brick and they really need to realize that, yeah, giving me bricks a bad idea because I'm going to take longest road off them. 12 rolls, which is incredible. Gives me a brick and then sheep for two ore. That's a terrible, terrible trade from green. That's going to put me within striking distance of getting a, a city right here. I'm going to go for the settlement first because that's going to put me on the wood port which is going to make it really easy for me to get a city. So I'm only three cards away from getting my first city which should help me accelerate my production. Blue has to do a three for one or to get a wheat. That's just inefficient right there. They haven't even built a city yet. They really needed to use that to build a city. Red gets the settlement on the two, oh sorry, the three for one port up the top and builds a city. That's a big turn from red. They are very dangerous. So I'm going to use my wood and sheep to build a city on the six, ten, nine to increase my sheep production. And then, yeah, three sheep on the ten there. Green's looking very dangerous, and so is red. Red could sneak longest road here, so we've got to be really careful up the top there. I have seven sheep in my hand. So red cuts blue off, and buys a development card. So I roll a 7, I've got to block the strongest spot here. And yeah, I really don't want red to keep accelerating, keep buying development cards. So I'm going to block them. So I'm going to trade my sheep for 3 ore here and hopefully get wheat on the next turn or a sheep. So I can build another city. Because I really start... I need to start making some moves here if I want to win this game. So I've got 9 cards in my hand. Red's buying more development cards. So red's getting really scary. Green hasn't done anything in a while. So yeah, trade in those all those sheep for wheat. And allows me to buy a city... I'm kind of trying to stay under the radar a bit and not connect my not connect my settlements until I have 8 points so I can uh, not seem like I'm a threat in this game because I kind of have come from nowhere. I've made up a lot of ground really quickly. 
in the last few turns. Blue builds inland and cuts green off. This is fantastic for me. This really limits how far green can keep continuing to build their road. They can go the other way, but it's going to mean they can't link up their settlements, which is really good for me. So yeah, green starts to build down the other, other way. Red blocks green. And I have another really bloated hand. So in this situation, what I'm going to do is go for that three for one port and build another settlement. My aim right now is to get to, to eight points. And then when I'm at eight points, I can focus on taking longest road. On the screen, it says I've only got a road of length two. So it doesn't seem like I'm that much of a threat, but if I connect those roads, I'm going to be on six roads. And then I've got plenty of room down the bottom to expand. So I'm very dangerous in this game. But then again, so is green. The city on the six and the city on the eight, wood and brick, just means they can expand so quickly. So yeah, I'm really going to have to make some moves real quick. Blue's taken largest army, which is really good. I like that a lot. That kind of takes the danger out of red. So I'm yeah, going to trade my sheep for two brick and then build another settlement here. So that spot's been open all game and it just gets me on eight. And now I can focus on taking longest road. So yeah, green is my main competitor here. I've really got to stop green at all costs. So the robber going on the eight brick there is really good for me. Green builds another road. And red's robbing green. This is really good. This is kind of why I Wanted to play possum a little bit and not take road early just so I don't get blocked. I do have a knight up my sleeve in case I do get robbed, but hopefully I shouldn't need to use it. Red themselves is going to try and take longest road. So this is a very interesting battle, and that's exactly what I needed. A 10 right there gives me 5 sheep and allows me to get... my road to six and then I'm going to trade all of that away for one more road so I'm very close to winning here and two brick from that 12 what a clutch roll right there that's exactly what I needed You know, I think it only rolled twice in the whole game, but bloody hell, it rolled exactly when I needed it. Green is on nine here, and I've got two sheep, which I can trade for a wood, and then I've got three wheat, which I can trade for a wood. Give me two roads to get me from seven to nine, and that'll be the game. So yeah, port strategy right here. Very interesting game. Um... I don't think anyone expected me to win. I was on two points for a very long time, but then as soon as I got on that sheep port with all that production, just started killing it with just the amount of um, the amount of resources that I could produce from the sheep port and the wood port gives me the win. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And to anyone new to my channel, welcome. I hope you got something out of this video. If you would have done anything different in this game, please let me know in the comments down below and we can discuss. Other than that, if you have any feedback and constructive criticism, I'd love to hear it and thank you.